Hey, this is Jonathan Lewis. Thank you for listening to another Stubby episode. We hope the following question and answer can be helpful to you in your welding and fabrication journey. Thank you to everybody who continues to send in their questions and providing feedback to make the Stubby series better. Without further ado, here is today's question. For this week's Stubby, I'm going to be talking about test fixtures. Because a couple weeks ago, I picked up one of Superior Welding's test weld fixtures, and I've been getting a lot of questions of, why do you need that? What is it for? Is that only for test? What is it for? We thought it'd be a good idea to do a stubby episode about this, because maybe a lot of people haven't used a test fixture like this before in the past. And honestly, before I got into aerospace work, I really hadn't used the welding fixture before either. These things are just for that. They're just for taking a test. Could you modify them for a future part or something? Possibly. But for the most part, they're just for weld tests. And the main reason you're using them for a weld test is because it eliminates different variables. It makes it so your plates are in the exact place they need to be. There's gas on both sides. It's a perfect scenario, which is what you want. For some reason, they always want your test welds to be the absolute perfect scenario, but the actual parts that you're working on generally are not. (laughs) They're either, you know, they've got FPI fluid on them or they've got exhaust on them. You know, they're just dirty you know, and then your test plates that you're doing in your test fixture, everything's pristine cleaned. Everything is absolutely the perfect scenario. And you wish your parts were like this. But the idea for the whole fixture is to hold your parts and eliminate different variables. So with the superior fixture, you can do a butt weld and you have gas on the back side, and you've got clamps holding down your plates to help minimize warpage and help minimize movement of the plates. If you set them up right, they won't overlap each other as you're welding down. And there's also a fixture on it that you can add to it that has for a fillet weld fixture. So it's kind of a multi-purpose thing. A lot of places in the past I've worked at and I've dealt with, they've had two individual test fixtures. They've had a butt weld and a fillet weld fixture. Every single place has their own test fixtures. They're all different. They're all designed by different people. They all function the same, but some of the things are a little bit different. Like the lengths are different. The thicknesses are different. You know, the gap that where the gas comes out on the backside is a bit different. You can have inserts that you can put in sometimes you can flip them over like the insert will be a solid copper block on one side with maybe a a groove channel in it or something to capture your your weld on the back side like if you're doing aluminum and on you take it out and you flip it over and now there's holes on the back side of it so you get gas in there they all function the same it's just to hold your plates down and get gas on the back side but like I said, every single one of them I've worked with have been different, and some of them have been amazing, and some of them have been awful. And the bad ones, usually with the, the hold-down clamps on the tops, the hold-down like bar, they'll be bolted down, and then they just leave the bolts sitting straight out, and you have to like go over those bolts with your glove or something like that or your wrist has to like bump into the bolt and or you're coming down and as you're getting to the end of the weld your hand sometimes your fingers are on fire and then you get up to that bolt and you still got another half inch or inch or so to go on your plate and it's like who thought of this fixture you know they didn't think of the actual person welding it in mind where you know you want to have those bolts subsurface so you've got nothing in the way of your gloves and you know you got a nice sliding room and stuff like that you know and the biggest thing too with these is companies don't want to spend a whole bunch of money on failed tests they want it to have as many variables removed from the situation so that they can send the plates off to get them tested and there's a higher likely that it's going to pass the first time and also using the fixture 
makes it so that if you're testing somebody, they can't complain about, well, you know, the plates moved, this is that, this is this, this is that, blah, 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 blah. You know, instead of just having, you know, two plates on the table, which in most cases, that's what the test is. Unless you're in like a, an aerospace company, they'll, they'll give you your test plate and your test fixtures. And most of the time they just go, here's your fixture, here's your plates, here's your wire, let me know when you're done. You have to know, okay, well, this is a butt weld fixture. This is how it works. And understand that, you know, some materials you need to tack at one end and V out. So you, as you weld down that butt weld, it closes together, where if you butted both of them together and tacked both ends, they pull so much that they're going to push against each other and they're going to start bowing down into that groove or they're going to start overlapping each other because they broke the tack at the end or there's a lot of issues that you can run into if you don't do things right in these fixtures but the long and short of it is a test fixture is just that like I said before in the beginning of this it is just for taking a test and they're expensive but if you're going to use them for taking certified tests and you're going to be x-rayed or whatever they pay for themselves time and time and time again with past tests on the first time. So if you're looking at getting into this type of work, or if you're looking at getting into an aerospace company, you're going to be using a test fixture. So just have an understanding of how they work and what they are. And, you know, don't, don't be surprised when they put you in a test booth or something and there's a the fixture and be like, okay... They're not that complicated. They're very, very simple. They're easy to figure out. Some of the tricks that I know is to make sure that the backside of the hold down bars are a little bit higher than the thickness of the plate. So you're actually getting the, the toes of the hold down bars are actually holding down your plates and up close by the weld where you want that force to be. So you need to shim the back sides up from time to time or if they were smart when they made it, they would actually put a little lip on those bars so that it automatically would tow down. So you just kind of got to look at what you got and go from there. Like I said before, I've dealt with some that are very nice. I've dealt with some that were very bad. And in the end, they all worked. So hopefully that might answer a few questions about the test fixtures you might see online like i said the one i picked up from jonathan at superior welding is a really great fixture i really like having it here and look forward to testing future employees on it and trust me when it comes time to test employees i'm gonna do just that i'm gonna put the test fixture down say here's your plates i want a butt weld and i want a fillet weld and walk away well, that wraps up another stubby episode. Do you have a question that you would like to have answered? We would love to answer your welding, fabrication, small business, or related question in a future episode. Send your question to Welding Tips and Tricks Podcast at gmail.com and be sure to put stubby in the subject line. You can also send us a DM on the Welding Tips and Tricks Podcast Instagram page or any of our personal pages at Superior Welding, Crummy Welding, or Weldmonger. Thank you again for all the support. Hope that you find this helpful. We will catch you on the next stubby episode.